All right, time to get started with the first section of this course, and that is the Twitter API. So just to reiterate, the Twitter API is what allows us to connect with Twitter's back end on behalf of a user and go get information for them, or we could in some instances even post tweets on their behalf. So what is it that we're going to be covering? First, we're going to learn how to create a Twitter API app. In order for us to do any sort of API work, we have to have an app with Twitter. Basically, it says, hey, Twitter, I want to be a developer on your platform, and they give you access then to allow you to get data on users' behalfs. And it's kind of like, you know, we're checking in with Twitter to say that we want to do this, and Twitter then will make sure and check and see is you know, our app following the rules, are we doing good things? And if at any point they feel like we're breaking their terms of service, they can shut us off. And so I'm going to show you how to get into that whole flow. But after that, then we're going to use a project called Swifter in order to connect with the Twitter API. So this is going to be sort of our launching point. This will be the base that we'll use to then in the next section, build that TweetGram app. So let's go ahead and start with our first video, creating a Twitter API app. Like I said, we're going to be creating a brand new app here and getting the data that we need in order to move forward with that Swifter project. So let's go jump into it now. So to create an app with Twitter, we're going to have to open up a web browser. So go ahead and open up whatever you'd like. I'm going to be using Safari. But go ahead and just go to the URL apps.twitter.com. Okay. And once you go here, this is basically the page where you can create one of these applications. And you're kind of wondering, like, Okay, want to eventually make an app, but you know, this isn't even an Xcode. So a Twitter app is basically the code name for saying you want to work with Twitter's API. And this is like, I think a better name is like your project name because you may use this Twitter app to facilitate data for your Android app, your iOS app, your Mac app, whatever it is. You know, they've decided to call them Twitter apps, so you've just got to work with that. So for example, if you've ever used the website Product Hunt, you've got to log in with Twitter if you want to upvote something, share something on Product Hunt, whatever it is. But basically what happens is if you go to Product Hunt and you say log in with Twitter, you get a little pop-up screen and it says, hey, Product Hunt would like to use your Twitter account in the following ways. And it will list out like it's going to use your username. It's going to allow to read tweets from your timeline. It's going to allow Product Hunt to tweet things for you, whatever permissions it is that they've asked for. And you can learn about how to do the specific things there. But basically, Product Hunt is saying, okay, we want some access into Twitter on your behalf. And so if you go ahead and put in your information, Product Hunt can then for example, go see your tweets and they can go see, you know, you have decided to, you want to tweet something, they can do that on their behalf. I can't remember if they do that or not, but those are all things that can happen with a Twitter application. So we want to go ahead and create one. A Twitter app is going to be connected with an account. It's probably fine just to go ahead and use your own personal Twitter account for this. If you feel the special need, you can go make a special development Twitter account if you need to. Please note that in order to do this, whatever Twitter account you use has to have a phone number on file with Twitter. So you might see an error ultimately pop up because of that. So if you're thinking about making a developer account, make sure that you have a phone number that you can use with that. But just go ahead and do the sign-in process, and I'll come back with you once you've signed in with a Twitter account. All right, so once you've gone ahead and logged in, you should see a screen similar to this. Yours might be different because you might not have any Twitter apps yet. I have a couple I love to play around with this and I've taught different things using Twitter apps before so that's why I have a whole list here but ultimately you want to create a new app so go ahead and hit that button there. Next thing that you need to do is you need to give your application a name and this needs to be unique and so for example I've used the name Tweetgram before so you're going to want to create your own name for this and you don't even have to mention Tweetgram if you don't want to it could literally just be random string letters and numbers but you want it to be something somewhat presentable. So I'm going to call mine maybe something like Tweetgram Nick. And you might do Tweetgram Sarah or Tweetgram John, whatever your name is. And again, this is just sort of if someone were to sign in with your application, they would get a page that says Tweetgram Nick would like to use your Twitter account, right? So you would want them to have this to be something that would be understandable to the user. Like if you were going to make an app called the egg social network or something like that, right? Like bunch of egg enthusiasts. This is probably the dumbest example I could come up with, but right? Like you would want the name of that to be like egg social network or something, right? So people know that it's sort of connected to the same thing. You don't want to put like your personal name in there. They're going to 
say, you know, who's this Nick Walter guy? More, you should put in like the name of the app. But again, this Tweetgram app, this probably isn't going to see the light of the day on the App Store. We're just learning how to work with these. And so anyways, I've probably gone too much into the name, but just want you to know it's got to be unique. And you should have some thought if you're going to push this live about what that name is going to be. You can always come back and change that too. Next, you need to provide a description here about what it is that your app's going to be doing and why you need it. So I'm going to say here a fun app to view images from a Twitter feed. Please enjoy. Something like that. You know, to kind of be a little bit warming for the user to say, yeah, okay, this is someone I can trust. Website, if you have a website, go ahead and put it in here. It's not a big deal if you don't. If you need to, you can put in my own website. I'm just going to do zappycode.com. Basically, this is if the user has any questions and stuff, they can click on the website to learn more information. Also, with like the callback URL and stuff, there's some fancy things that you can do, but really, you don't really need to worry about that. Just put some sort of website here. If you have your own website, put that in there, but you can put something else in there if you need to. Then you have to agree to Twitter's developer agreement. So go ahead and say yes to that. And once you're done, you can hit create your Twitter application. Okay. Hope we're getting an error here. I've done the incorrect URL format. I think I'm going to have to throw an HTTP on there. Let's go ahead and try this. And boom, there we go. So now that we've done this, we have a application on Twitter's developer platform, which is excellent. This is, you know, if you have any issues with this, please let me know. Again, a big one that I see a lot is whatever Twitter account you signed into up here has to have a phone number connected to it. And so if you're getting any sort of errors, check and make sure that that is in place. But if you're there, then you've got all this awesome information. And so these are the big things that we're going to need moving forward, like this consumer key. We're going to talk about that. And if we click on this manage uh, keys and access level, I'm showing you this information because this, again, app is not going to see the light of day. But these are things that you would want to keep secret. This isn't something that you should share with the world or go post inside of a GitHub repository because if people have access to this, they can control the app, which ultimately means they can do things on behalf of a user, which, you know, is not a good deal. And that's how you kicked off of the Twitter platform if you do things like that. But, you know, you can always come back and regenerate the consumer key in secret. These, you know, essentially think of it as your application's passwords if those get compromised somehow. Also, this is a really cool tool. You're going to learn about how we're going to use tokens to interact with things, and this will, you know, save us some time for testing and whatnot. But this is a good place to stop for this video because this has gotten us to this place. I guess one more thing that I would like to mention is here inside of this permissions. And so basically, there's three levels that you can get to with users' Twitter account. You can say, I only want to read data from their account. I can read and write, which means that you're going to be posting information. And then there's read, write, and access direct messages. That's like the most extreme version. So for us, if you wanted to, you could go all the way down to read only. That's all that we're going to need. I'm just going to keep it at read and write. And you might be wondering, well, why would I change these? Well, whenever someone goes to log into your app with Twitter, it's going to say, you know, this app is looking to only read information. Or if you have read and write, it's going to say it can read information and do things on your behalf. And if it's this one, it's like, not only can it read it right, but it can also can control your direct messages. And so you might want to ratchet this down as much as you can just to build that much more confidence. Because if I signed into something, it's like, oh, well, I can, you know, this app isn't going to have permission in order to write things on my behalf. You know, that makes me feel a little bit safer. I'll feel free to do this. But the other thing that you got to consider is maybe at some point in the future, you want your app to be able to send tweets on the user's behalf. If you don't have this checked, you're going to have to ask the user to re-up their permission level for that. And that can be a very hard transition to manage. So for me, I think in most use cases, unless you're planning on using direct messages, just go ahead and do read-write. I think most users are okay with that. Also, there's some more stuff that you can do here for requesting email addresses. But anyways, wanted to show you what that was all about. But again, good place to stop here. In the next one, we're going to be using Swifter to go and actually access the API.